Hi everybody, welcome back. I'm Dorothy. I'm a professional astrologer and you can find me on the web at nhastrologer.com. You can also find me on social media, Dorothy Morgan Astrologer. That would be on Facebook. So in the meantime, let me get started. I want to talk to you Aquarius and those who have Aquarius rising and this is for you who April, May and June. Itchy. I love holding a paintbrush when I talk. Helps me to bring that energy through. I want to talk to you. Let's start off with April 4th and we have a full moon lunar eclipse at 14 degrees of Libra in your ninth house. And so with that energy of an eclipse in the ninth house, it really will highlight what you find as your truth. That ninth house is all about my awareness, my metaphysical experiences, my higher education, what I know, how I'm exposed to other cultures. You know, if you just have keep yourself in a tiny little ball and just in your neighborhood, you know nothing about other neighborhoods, other countries, and there is no expanded knowledge. Now, when there is an eclipse there, and you had an eclipse there as well on October 8th, over the last six months, there is something that would have shifted and changed for you. Now, a lot of people might have, especially you guys with Aquarius Rising, you might have started some new education sometime within a month or so of October. And now you're either you're either working through it, completing it, or, or decided that it's not going to work out for you. Something is shifting and changing. You're trying to find balance in that educational piece of your life. So allow this to work through, work through it. You get your clues from October because that's when it happened before. Almost the same degree, a degree away from where it is on April 4th. So allow that energy to, um, to open up and show you what it is that you need to work on when it comes to things that are balanced or not balanced in your life, okay? All right. Next, on April 8th, we have Jupiter stationary at the sign of 12 degrees, actually, of Leo. It is moving direct now. It's been retrograde for months and months. And that is in your seventh house of partnerships and relationships and partnerships. Jupiter's been moving through that area, and I want you to focus back, I'll have you focus back again to September. What was going on in September? Because when a planet, big planet like this one, Jupiter on out, when they stop to move direction, whether it's stationary or to retrograde, the points, the degree that they stop at, the planet spends a long time at that degree. So this 12th degree of Leo is very important in that relationship part of your chart. So mid-September um, is when it was there before at 12 degrees. So what was going on in September? There is some sort of repeat now. A repeat means we get to fix things or move through something or we can see the culmination and something is completing. You're going to have to decide this is about your partnerships and your love relationships and or. Some people it will just be business partnerships and some people it will be the love relationships. It will be different for everybody. On April 16th we have Pluto doing its retrograde motion and that's at that 15th degree of Capricorn in your 12th house. So Pluto moving through the 12th house, you just over the last number of years, and this has been a lot of years, 2008 is when it started, it's going to go on for a while, we're only halfway through it. You know, basically with Pluto being stationed there for um, quite a few weeks, we just have to work through some of those internal processes, it's psychological, so it will be private, you won't be, this won't be out in the open by any means, it'll just be an internal quiet private process that you can uh, focus on when you want to or when it comes up <laughs> it'll happen once in a while April 18th we have a new moon at 28 degrees of Aries it's in your third house now a new moon in Aries is all about identifying what I am who I am what do I want what do I want what do I need it's lovely to have a new moon in Aries because it's like a fresh start. You can set new goals. It's in your third house of communication, which also rules your siblings and your local neighborhood, your car, that type of driving, which is just local driving, you know, in your tri-state area, whatever that means for you. That's highlighted, so you can focus on that. You can go to my website, too, as these new moons and full moons come up. I don't post them all at once. I post them as they're coming up. And you can read the forecast and get a little more information there. So go on to the forecast page. 
So with that new moon in that third house, communication, little, little bits of travel is very, very important for you. Now, on May 3rd, we have the full moon at 13 degrees of Scorpio, and that's in your career sector in that 10th house. So the full moon in Scorpio in the 10th house that highlights what is going on at work. That's a simple full moon. So it is just means that there's some dynamic, some emotional dynamic going on right now. And there's a shift and change for you. Now that 10th house is also how I'm seen out in society, my social standings. So whether you're married or divorced, that might be shifting or changing now. Whether you're single or in a relationship, that could be shifting and changing now as well. The full moon tends to mean that there is a lot of attention brought to it. So whatever the shift is from one way to another, uh, there can be some attention drawn to that situation. Again, that full moon in Scorpio is rather intense. It's very, very emotional. And so if you need to move things through, move them through. Try not to be too emotional with your boss. Bosses aren't always thrilled about that, but I know you can work this in the best way that you possibly can. Now, next we have on May 7th, we have Venus moving into the sign of Cancer. That's lovely. Venus wants to care and nurture for everybody. That's how she's going to love for the next three, four weeks. It's in your sixth house, which is work. So you have a career hit. hit. You know, you have something going on in your career sector in that 10th house with the full moon. And then we have Venus moving into your 6th house, which is all about work and your daily routine. So maybe you do need to really bring a little more emotion into what it is. Maybe you do need to have a sit down with the people who either are under you or the boss and just say, this is how I feel about something. You'll have about a four-week period to work through this if you choose to. On May 11th, we have Mars moving into the sign of Gemini, into your fifth house. Mars in Gemini is a lot of communication, a lot of vocal activity, and a lot of travel. Now that, local travel. Now that fifth house, that fifth house energy is what am I passionate about, but what I love to create. It's also our children, because we create them. So what am I, how am I going to be creative now? You've got this fiery planet, Mars, in an air sign, Gemini, in a fiery house, the fifth house. So that just tells me that you have a lot of ideas in your head and you're trying to work through. I want you just to put them down in paper. Maybe you're going to be a good writer. Maybe you could write things out. Journal. This is the best way to use Mars in Gemini in the fifth house. Fifth house is going to be um, a focus for you for the, for the next uh, two months. So starting at this point, once Mars gets into Gemini. So a lot of communication and a lot of creativity. We'll get to more of that in a sec. On September 17th on the west coast of the United States, September 18th on the east coast, new moon in the sign of Taurus in your fourth house of home and family. So your values, you're going to shift that a little bit. Whatever's going on for you in May, there's a shift at home. So you can really appreciate what your family is all about, what your home is all about, what that home is dynamic is like. There's a nice change there and you can set some new goals. New moons are about setting new goals and new intentions. So what you value at home is write things down, write it down in like a new moon journal so to speak if you will and really set some new goals for yourself and what is important to you, what you value at home. All right. So whether it's more time there or more stuff, it's up to you. Next, on May 18th, we have Mercury going retrograde. It will be retrograde from May 18th to June 11th in your fifth house in the sign of Gemini. So in that fifth house. So that just means that we need to take our time in this three weeks that that planet is retrograde, May 18th to June 11th. Take our time in the things that we're thinking, the contracts we're, we're creating, the things that we're agreeing to. Now, Mercury is retrograde in all three air signs in this year, 2015. We already had the one in Aquarius, that's an air sign. We now have in May into June, the one in Gemini, an air sign. Later in the fall, we'll have it in Libra. When this planet is retrograde in all three air signs, that just tells me that we need to stop thinking so much and get out of that left brain and move into the right brain a little bit more and become more creative. That fifth house is that right brain creative energy. All right. So move into that. Try and work that the best way that you possibly can. On <clears throat> May 21st, the sun enters that sector as well. 
So that means that will be highlighted. So our creative sector, for you who are Aquarius with Aquarius or Aquarius rising, you have a high tendency for creativity in this May and June time period. I really want you to focus in on that and you will love that. Now, we also have that full moon in Sagittarius. It's 11 degrees of Sag. It's in your 11th house. Aquarius is in charge of the 11th house in the natural order of things. So I want you to focus in on what you truly want. That's opposite the fifth house, that creative piece. Straight across the chart, the 11th house is where we do all our social things, social media, joining groups, or not joining groups. Because I know some Aquarius people that are very rigid. They would prefer to just go to work, come home, don't ever bother me with anything. But they are rebels and they create problems by pushing buttons because they think thought about it so well and they thought about it for such a long time that they create they create social change by just getting one person upset pissing people off and they can do that too and so you can you can play it any way you like you decide Aquarius it's up to you whether you're gonna get out there and be very social and make changes that way or and you're gonna get out there and speak your truth now I can say or, or you're just going to do it one person at a time and just upset people. Or just be a rebel in your own quiet self way. Whatever you want. We are in charge. We can do what we want. I'm just giving you some guidelines. You decide what you want to do with it. All right. The energy of what's going on around you. If ever you don't get a recession, that's fine. But these are the, the general energies and these are the energies that are playing out universally. So no matter what your birth time is, whether you know what your rising sign is or not, these are universal energies and these are vibrations that I'm talking about for every zodiac sign that is going to match every zodiac sign no matter what I say because this is how this works. It is a universal energy that we're all working through and we're all filtering and in our own way is when I start talking about where it is and what house is. And if you want more specifics, you need a private session so you can give us the exact birth time and we can give exact information. But unless you have that done, this is a great second piece, okay? But don't be shy. I love doing sessions too. So, when I leave off, we have on June 5th, Venus moving into the sign of Leo. That goes into your relationship part of your chart, so your partnerships and your relationships. That's Leo energy. That's the fifth house. I just talked about that. So that Leo energy, Venus and Leo, is somebody who is very showy, very dynamic. You most likely have, if you have Leo on that seventh house cusp, which you will if you have Aquarius rising, then you're going to have a partner that is somebody who, who really does demand and command attention. Venus and Leo is going to command some attention from your partner. On June 11th, that's when Mercury goes direct again in that fifth house of creativity. So from June 11th all the way until um, we have a new moon on June 16th in Gemini as well in that fifth house. It's a great opportunity. So June 11th forward, and then especially with that new moon on June 16th, it's fantastic opportunities, again, to really tap into the creative pieces that you want to tap into ask for guidance from your higher self, from your angels, or whomever you pray to, or whomever you meditate from or with. You know, really ask for that guidance, and that's what we can get to do with the new moon in Gemini. And again, go to my website. I'll have that forecast up before June 16th. And back up a little bit to June 14th. Saturn returns to the sign of Scorpio because it is retrograde um, this year, 2015. And it backs into the sign of Scorpio until September 18th. That's your career sector. So with Saturn backing into the career sector, there might be just some a little bit of last minute or last few months worth of fine tuning of what's going on in your career. Because from 2012, all of 13 and all of 14, Saturn in that sector for you, um, in that career sector, um, has changed a lot in your life over two and a half years. And so from for the three months from mid-June, July, August, September, we have Saturn sneaked back into Scorpio, is sneaking back into Scorpio. So we're able to really look at what is, um, what we shifted and changed in the last two and a half years. And, you know, have we finally 
put in a new foundation for ourselves, especially in relating to our career. Some of us will change completely, have completely changed careers in that two year period, two and a half year period, and now um, we're finalizing things to get them just a little more steady. All right, and this is a good opportunity to do that. Now I want to finish the forecast here with the summer solstice on June 21st. The sun will enter the sign of Cancer, and on the 24th, Mars follows suit into Cancer into that sixth house, and that is where your daily routine comes in. That is your work sector, and what you do on a daily basis at your co-workers as well, your health, how you eat to take care of yourself, everything relating to my daily routine and keeping that organized. So tap into that cancer energy of it, which is I need to care and nurture for myself a little bit more. And once I do that, then I'll be able to <coughs> make my daily routine will feel much more comforting and much more nurturing for what it is that, that you need. All right, I'm going to leave you with that. Thank you very much for watching. Please share. You are the social ones of the Zodiac, so I ask you to share my stuff. Whatever you love, share it on your social media. And I am at Dorothy Morgan Astrologer on Facebook. Thank you for finding me here. And come to NHAstrologer.com a couple times a month, and I have the new moon and full moon forecast posted as they come up. And you can contact me there for online classes that I teach sessions, just everything. Come visit. Thank you very, thank you very much. And namaste. Hmm. Namaste.